Hi everyone, welcome to worship and welcome to my dining room. I hope you're doing okay. You ready to start? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So today I'm going to tell you the story of John the Baptist. But before we start, I'm going to set the scene a bit for you. I'd like you to imagine that you're in a desert, maybe similar to this one in the picture. It's a wilderness of rocks and sand and stones. There are one or two tiny streams here and there, hidden at the bottom of rocky valleys, and occasionally you might find a skinny little tree. All you can hear is the wind and the occasional scuttling of tiny creatures. There's nobody else around. It's not a place to get lost in this wilderness. If people have to travel through it, they ride on camels and get to the next waterhole as quickly as they can. Imagine that you are in this wilderness. What are you going to eat? Any ideas? Can I hear any ideas? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know what I would eat in the wilderness like that. What are you going to wear to protect you from the heat of the day and the cold of the night? What are you going to wear? What do you wear when it's on a hot sunny day to keep the sun off you and protect you? And a sun hat and sun cream. And what about when it's cold? It's getting cold now, isn't it? Do you wear a coat and a scarf and a woolly hat? This is the story about a man called John who was living rough in the wilderness. The Bible says that he wore camel skins to protect him from the sun and the cold. Now these camel skins weren't like a posh fur coat. John had found, this, is, this bit's quite disgusting, if you're squeamish, block your ears. John found a dead camel and cut off its skin. He dried it in the sun, but it was still crusty with camel blood and it smelt like rotten meat. In fact, wherever John went, he stank and there would be a cloud of flies and the wild lions would lick their lips. John was always hungry We've heard some suggestions of desert food. The Bible tells us that John ate wild honey and locusts. Now, people disagree about what the word, the actual original word in the Bible means. Some think that John ate beans from the carob tree, which are also known as locust beans. Now, they taste sweet, a bit like chocolate. Other people think that John actually ate the insects that look like big grasshoppers, which are eaten as tasty treats in some part of the world and are actually a good source of protein. So what do you think? Put your hands up if you think John ate some chocolatey beans to stay alive in the desert. I know I would prefer to eat chocolatey beans to stay alive in the desert. Put your hands up if you think John ate locusts with their crunchy heads and bristly legs. I think he probably ate locusts actually, because they would be more nutritional. I can't tell which one's voted as one. But if you want to hear the story, the rest of the story, shout, what's the story? Are you shouting?
This story is called Locusts and Honey. It happened after th about 30 years after Jesus was born. Jesus was ready to do God's work among the people of Galilee. So God had an important message to deliver to those people. Get ready, the Lord is coming. God wondered who could deliver his message for him. The Roman emperor? Hmm, maybe not. Pilate, the Roman governor? Hmm, Herod, the ruler of Galilee? No, God chose none of these important men in their grand place, palaces. He picked an ordinary man called John, who was wandering alone in the wilderness, wearing half a dead camel and eating insects. John took God's message to the people. Get ready, the Lord is coming. The people replied, what do you mean? So John explained, do the right thing Say sorry for what you've done wrong and do good. He gave them some examples. He said to ordinary folk, share food, clothes, whatever you can. To the greedy tax collectors, he said, be fair, don't take more money than you should. And to the tough Roman soldiers, he said, spare us your threats, don't bully us for money. He even said to King Herod, don't you care that your marriage is against the law? Some important priests came from Jerusalem and said to, said to John, so are you God's chosen one? Not me, replied John. And then he said to everyone, beware, God is sending someone who is far more important than me. I'm not fit to lick the soles of his boots. He will sort you all out, make no mistake. Good people on one side and bad people on the other. Which side are you going to be on? John had a lot of fans and he baptised thousands of people in the River Jordan. He also had a lot of enemies. Herod threw him in prison, but no one hated him more than Herod's wife because John had said to her that their marriage was wrong and she decided to have a go and her plan involved a big dinner tray. Can you guess what she wanted to put on that dinner tray? I'll give you a clue. It wasn't John's locusts. No, it was really far more disgusting. You sure you want to know what it is? I'm not going to tell you because I think you're too young. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you. It, you can find out, you can read it in the Bible. The whole point of John the Baptist and the whole story of John is that John wanted people to get ready for the coming of Jesus by saying sorry for what they'd done wrong. And every Advent, Advent starts this Sunday. People prepare to celebrate Jesus's birthday at Christmas by telling the story of John the Baptist. Advent is a time for getting ready by saying sorry to God. And it's important for us all to say sorry for whatever we've done wrong and whenever we do wrong. So for our prayers today, I'd like to give us a chance to say sorry for God for what we've done wrong. As you think about what that might be, I'd like you to hold your fist nice and tightly. Imagine that inside your fist is the thing that you're feeling sorry for. Perhaps you've been unkind to someone broken something and not owned up to it, or told a lie. You might be too sorry to tell anyone else, or maybe even embarrassed, but you can tell God and he will forgive you. So we're going to have a moment of quiet as you think about what it is that you want to say sorry for. What is it that's inside your fist? When you've said sorry in your heart, you don't have to say it out loud, just say sorry in your heart. You can open your hands and let it go. And know that you are forgiven. And we're going to say together, may God forgive us. Amen. May God 
forgive us. Amen. Now, as it's been a really odd week, for a treat, we're going to do the piano song. Okay, are you ready? Up on your feet. See you next week in school. God bless. Take care. Stay safe.